I didn't think I had very much in common with James Finton Lauder, except the fact that both of us are sons of, of Catholic, uh, should I say staunch Catholic nationalist TDs, MPs for the constituency of Leash, Honest Pat and Blessed Oliver, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, both of us had the benefit of uh, education in a uh, school in Carlow, the seat of the Diocese of Kildare in Lachlan. Uh, that's unfortunately where the comparison ends. He joined the Young Irelanders, I joined Young Fine Gael. The management, the management of our economic crisis over the past number of years now poses major questions of Lawler's green reeds for Irish society. And that question is threefold, economically, socially, and politically. Lawler addressed this issue himself in 1848 when he opined that written constitutions and statutory laws were mere paper and parchment and of no value without what he described as a social constitution, as referred to by Dearman. And our challenge has highlighted commodities more precious than diamonds or gold. These commodities are trust and confidence. And I accept there has been a collapse of trust and confidence in many institutions, in politics, in public administration. And I refer to the personal trust that exists between a politician and constituent. That remains the core of the system. I'm elected to Parliament by the people of Leash, albeit with a wider suffrage than that existed uh, in the time of honest Pat Lawler. But the bond of trust remains the same. People place trust in me to carry out my job effectively and efficiently in their best interest. They judge me regularly at the polls. But there is something of a contradiction in that collectively politicians are distrusted, yet individually the local TD is not only trusted and respected, but sometimes actually liked. The restoration of collective trust is the greatest challenge facing Ireland's people, because I see a lethal mixture of apathy and cynicism, which unless we address, will delay our economic recovery and inflict lasting damage on our system of governance. Currently, we're embarking on a profound program of reform and renewal at all levels of Irish society. While this program must be led by the political class, it must not be exclusive to the political class. We as politicians must change the way we do our business in the same way that Lawler felt the ruling classes of the 1840s must change. He advocated agrarian uprising, ultimately violence, which he thinly disguised as moral insurrection. In my case, I advocate political and constitutional reform at an accelerated pace than that which we now see. As we, and, and I think we can do that now as the painful effects of the so-called austerity budgets result in economic growth and jobs. In this regard, the current debate around the Shannon must not be seen as a standalone reform, and I hope we come back to this in the context of our discussion. Explicit in the writings of law is active citizenship, which needs to move up our agenda and develop and foster a culture of trust. People need to identify bad practice, stop it in its tracks. Just as in Lauder's time, we need tools for countering deception and <coughs> wrongdoing and malpractice and mechanisms that allow us foster a culture of trust. We must think differently about truth and perception. We politicians must practice the tactics of straight talking and authenticity. Election promises tell people what we think we want them to hear. But as citizens of a republic with rights and responsibilities, we all have a duty to take this responsibility seriously. This responsibility includes being active participants in our community, in our politics, and in our wider society. To quote Plato, we are not made for ourselves alone, our family, our community, our country, all of a claim on our birth. And one such example of this active citizenship as referred to by Dermot is the recently inaugurated Citizens Constitutional Convention. So as we officially leave recession and ready ourselves to remove the shackles of the bailout conditions, which may well be compared to Lawler's landlords, we should be more confident about our future. We should face the future with an open but always questioning mind. We can be confident that persistence, hard work and determination will see us through our present difficulties. The positive face of Ireland is attractive. Our own current difficulties weigh heavily on our minds and rightly so. We made catastrophic mistakes and glaring omissions. But still, if real incomes in Ireland return to their levels of 2000, this would still represent an enormous improvement compared to the 1970s when we joined the EU as by far its poorest member. Casting our eyes even further back to reflect on Lawler's Ireland, we appreciate the benefits now of a stable and secure country, 
overcoming the challenge with vigor and confidence and a rigid determination. So finally, as we approach the centenary of Irish independence, the challenge, while fundamentally different to the challenge of James Finton Lawler, but the question posed remains the same. Who wins the wreath that will be green forever? Thank you.